At West X, one day recently I walked in to start a workshop and one of the children turned around and said, hello artist, and it was just so lovely, I just said hello artist back. The Devon Carousel Project to me is a great way of getting families um, to do creative um, projects with their kids. For me the Carousel Project is um, a grassroots arts project, um, a collaborative arts project. A fantastic opportunity to work with the early years community. Kind of opportunity for parents, for mums and dads and parents and grandparents and all kinds to get involved and try new experiences. It's ambitious in its scope. Um, and it's a, a rich ground for learning. It came about because I was made redundant and lots of friends and artists who I've worked with in the past also found themselves in the same situation affected by cuts so we all came together really. Before the pilot year I personally have made really strong links with the children's centres to having my own daughter. The ones we're working with are very open to parents and contributing ideas and taking things forward. So we were able to offer regular weekly sessions based on themes that they were already developing at the centres themselves. When children get to about eight, nine years old, they often begin to self sense themselves. They begin to say, I'm no good at art, I don't like art, I can't draw, things like that. But for very young children, there's none of that. Um, they just make art in a completely spontaneous, free way. I tend to think that it's difficult to do printmaking with such a young age group that's essentially sort of play work, but in actual fact, the children responded really well to printmaking. We worked with West X Children's Centre um, and after consultation with them came up with the idea to produce a community flag. Children there worked with Double Elephant Print Workshop as well as our visual artist Tamsin to create a beautiful flag which is now flying outside the centre. We worked with the children to create different printing blocks. I think that was the first workshop we did and so the children were thinking about how they could make different patterns and use different textures and then they used the printing press and that's something they'd never done so that whole process of working like that for them it was a really big thing. I think that went on for a few weeks because it was so exciting. And the same children seem to really want to do it every week. Yes, yeah, some of them the stay. <laughs> you would get some that would like be there continually all day printing and printing and printing. Even the whole thing of working with colour in that way, just seeing red on the table and just seeing blue on the table, it was a you know, really lovely experience for the children. And then the flag was produced and of course the children then saw their work made onto a big huge professional flag. I remember Tenny, one of the little girls, who was absolutely delighted that, you know, that her flag, you know, this thing that she'd done and made was suddenly on the flag and the flag suddenly flying in the car park. You know. For her self-esteem that's a really wonderful thing and she sees it every day. Every time they come to the centre they can look up and see this flag and see the exact little bit that they contributed to so it really is a representation of the children who are part of the centre. The beauty of the Devon Carousel project is that you can generally work with children and parents over a period of time and get to know them so you can introduce things that don't just have an end result. The process is as important as the outcome often so an example of successful piece of visual art was putting down some black paper, using some flour, and children and the parents, if they wanted to, could step in it and explore the marks they made with their feet. I could very quickly sort of developed a quite simple formula um, of using cut-out paper shapes that the children kind of decorated, and they quickly got a really nice product, um, but that they were completely free to express themselves. The group at St Sidwell's was a new group, so it was really interesting to see how it was to evolve, and very quickly the parents and people who came along with the children were very enthusiastic, wanted to do something quite ambitious. 
I found that challenging but really interesting and I think the families got a lot out of it and we built sort of a 3D street scene. I could never have envisaged that we'd be able to do that at the beginning of the session and I'd been working very flat and then to think that children of that, at that age group could sort of create something 3D and then actually start playing with it. That was really exciting actually to see that. The visual art also informs a lot of the other work. It's kind of key to the animation work or to the film work or to the storytelling because it's something that children relate to immediately. I think the animation work in this project is really unique because it enables the young people to learn on all different kinds of levels. Animation is quite a patient skill and quite a difficult skill and it actually requires quite a lot of motor control. Children love to see images on a TV or on a screen. They were fascinated by operating a computer or making objects which then could be animated. The amazing thing is that you will get these really, really young children that you would, and I don't think not just us, but also the parents just wouldn't expect, can do this just getting right into it and having a level of patience and control over what they're doing that's actually beyond children older than that. The animation team have found that it's most effective when they work together. One of them will target their work for maybe the older children and do some quite high-tech stuff for that age group, whereas the other artists will do something much more participatory, working with a larger group of families. And then both pieces of work are layered together to create something representative of the whole group. Two guys sitting around a lot of technology can be quite daunting for especially very young, shy children and sometimes parents as well. And what's been really interesting is as the project has grown, we're getting situations where they're just, they know exactly when they walk into the room what we're doing. They can come straight over and they're just comfortable to just go for it. A really important aspect of the Carousel project is working with other local community groups and we're very lucky in Exeter to have an organisation called Love Local Food. There's a partnership between Love Local Food and the Carousel Project which sees weekly sessions looking at where food comes from, how to prepare vegetables and cooking and eating through the medium of storytelling. The work that Love Local Food is doing at Beacon Heath includes preparing and cooking vegetables, but excitingly the more long-term connection of linking into the allotments which is being established next to the children's centre. It's looking at planting things which can then be harvested and then be cooked and then be eaten within the same setting. Engaging in local food over a period of time means that the children and the parents get more adventurous in terms of what they eat, how they eat, how they prepare it. It's exciting when children are eating things because they've helped prepare them that they wouldn't normally eat and therefore that leads into parents buying food that they didn't think their children would eat but now discover that they do which means that eating habits start to be changed. Highlighting the choices that we have for healthy eating and making the whole food thing fun is um, really beneficial, I think. Various strands of the Carousel Project has seen groups going out from their centres to visit other locations. Sometimes this can be an opportunity for families to go to places that they would not normally go to or not be able to have access to. We've made strong links with Killerton House, which is the local National Trust property. We've been taking families up there regularly um, every half term and it's a part of the project which the families really enjoy. Um, the whole process of kind of getting on the bus, going there, doing an activity, having a picnic and then coming home again. It's like um, a mini school trip really. There's also the going as a group of people to a location is very different to going as an individual family. It opens up the possibilities of children playing with each other in the location for parents to be talking to each other within the location and makes the visit a, a social event as well as a learning event. As the project's grown, I think what's been really interesting is working with some of the other artists. The opportunity to collaborate has been a, one of the most interesting things about the project. We've gone from being able to just work separately as artists in a session around a theme to actually really creating combined pieces of work. Some of the most interesting work has been where the ownership is shared. We're 
almost creating a model of collaboration between children, between children and their parents and carers and between artists. That comes out, for example, in little films like The Family Portraits where we've got a film work and that film work of the families has been based on movement they've done with the movement artists. They've then been making the frames for that to sit in and the back walls for that with a visual artist, all working on the same idea and the same theme over two sessions, for example. It leads to so much more exciting opportunities of, of creating things you wouldn't have thought of. A collaboration that's been particularly effective is our visual artist Tamsin working with our dance artist Lizzie. They've been basing that around well-known stories. Tamsin will work with the families to create some art which Lizzie will then use within her dance and children really respond to that. That kind of happens kind of across the board I think with all of the collaboration and all of the artists and I think that that enables us especially with this age group to do something that's led and facilitated well enough but at the same time is still really really a bottom-up project is coming from the people and what they want to explore and how they want to express themselves. The best thing is working with parents and yeah. their children. Just seeing the interaction between a parent and the child and just seeing how it helps them to relate to one another. The new jobs of the future have been invented so what we need to create are really creative people. Children of today need to be forward thinking and able to invent new things and I think that's something that the project's really given us an experience of. To instill that confidence in a child at that age, to respect their world, that they're creating something has huge significance for them. The sense that a scribble isn't just a scribble, that it has huge value. That I find fascinating. I think that by doing this pilot year, people have begun to trust us and now recognise the importance of creative and artistic input into children's lives and also into the lives of parents and how beneficial this can be to our wellbeing.